And the final reaction mechanisms that we want to visit in Chapter 7 are the RNA enzymes or ribozymes. While most enzymatic functions within the cell are mediated by proteins, some key cellular processes are mediated by RNA enzymes, including the peptidyl transferase activity of the ribosome during protein synthesis. A less well-known chemical reaction is mediated by the RNA ribozyme, known as the hammerhead ribozyme, and is shown here. The hammerhead ribozyme is a small, self-cleaving molecule of RNA. In this case, the single-stranded RNA molecule forms this hammerhead structure that is shown in two dimensions here and is shown in three dimensions down here. This self-cleaving process is then mediated using the 2' hydroxyl group of the 5' sugar residue. So you've got the 5' side and the 3' end of the RNA molecule as it's twisted about. So 5' of the cleavage site, the 2' hydroxyl on this ribose residue is going to mediate nucleophilic attack on the downstream nucleotide in the phosphate group. The downstream portion of the RNA molecule then is going to act as the leaving group, and this will be the bond that ends up being cleaved, as the electrons will flow back into the phosphate group. So essentially, this is breaking apart the nucleotide into the phosphate group, which gets trapped on the 5' side of the RNA molecule, and the nucleoside is going to be released with that 3' fragment that's going to break off here. So this results in this cyclic cleavage product on the 5' side of the molecule, where the phosphate group is bound at the 2 position and the 3' hydroxyl position of the terminal ribose in this fragment. We will see that small RNA molecules are also really useful in the spliceosome during the splicing of intron sequences from the messenger RNA molecules after they're first transcribed. RNA molecules are also key during peptide synthesis. The ribosome is a much more complex structure than the hammerhead ribozyme, and it represents a ribozyme of critical importance. Ribosomes consist of two major subunits, called the large subunit and the small subunit. These are complex structures that contain a mixture of ribosomal RNA, shown in the orange color, and protein components, shown in the blue color. The peptidyl transferase active site is shown in green, here, housed on the large subunit within the rRNA component of the molecule. This is where the peptide bond will form between amino acids during protein synthesis. This diagram gives a schematic representation of the ribosome's small and large subunits coming together during peptide synthesis. The messenger RNA, shown in red, is docked to the small subunit of the RNA. And transfer RNAs, shown in green and dark red, dock onto the messenger RNA and are held in place by the large subunit. Dehydration synthesis occurs by the amino acids coming into close proximity on the large subunit. A likely mechanism for the formation of the amide bond between the growing peptide on the P site and the amino acid on the A site of the ribosome has been proposed from crystal structures with the bound substrates and transition state analogs. Catalysis does not involve any of the ribosomal proteins, which are not shown since none is close enough to the peptidyl transferase center to provide amino acids that could participate in things like general acid-base catalysis. Hence, the rRNA must act as the enzyme, and the most likely mechanism to stabilize the oxyanion transition state that will form at the electrophilic carbon center is a precisely located water molecule, which is positioned at this oxyanion hole through hydrogen bonding to a uracil residue that's present in the rRNA molecule. In this mechanism, nucleophilic attack by the incoming amine functional group, which attacks the carbonyl carbon of the nascent peptide, is facilitated 
by a concerted proton shuttle. The rebounding electrons from the oxyanion cause the ribose of the tRNA to serve as a leaving group, where the oxygen at the three prime position is going to abstract a proton from the two prime hydroxyl position, which in turn is going to abstract a proton from the incoming amine molecule of the other amino acid, creating this proton shuttle mechanism. Thus, throughout chapter 7, we have seen many examples of all the major strategies that enzymes use to reduce the activation energy and stabilization of transition states within the chemical reactions that they mediate. In chapter 8, we will gain a better understanding about how protein activity is regulated in vivo and when protein degradation occurs.